Well, you may remember the movie Woman Thou Art Loosed, based on the book by T.D. Jakes. Well, now the writer of the screenplay for that movie has a new film out. It's called Preacher's Kid. You lied to me. I'm going on the road with a gospel play. I mean, it's just like church daddy singing, praising, and praising. You're not going anywhere. Help me! The Preacher's Kid is a new heart-touching film about redemption. The man behind the film, Stan Foster, has a remarkable redemption story of his own. Stan grew up in a rough neighborhood. In elementary school, he started selling drugs. Later, he scored well on an IQ test and his life turned around. Then while taking pre-law in college, his path took a different turn, and he moved to L.A. Without taking a single acting or film class, Stan started a successful Hollywood career. He's acted, written scripts, and now is both producer and director of his new film, The Preacher's Kid. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Stan Foster. Stan, it is great to have <laughs> Thank you, you here. For that. This is pretty exciting. But before we talk about preachers, kids, tell me a little bit about your own childhood, because you're not a preacher's kid. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I, I'm from uh, Youngstown, Ohio, and uh, it was a pretty tough town to grow up in, and got involved in a lot of things I shouldn't have, and and um, somehow I got to Hollywood. Still don't know how it happened. Well, so if, if you grew up in a family where church wasn't the core of, of what you were raised with, how did you come to know Christ? Did you know who Jesus was? Or? I, I was I, my, my household was filled with prayer, and, and my mother was very uh, a, a faith-filled woman. And Respectful of the things of God, yeah. Absolutely, and she sent me to church. <laughs> but, you know, it's... Um, but you, you get caught up in outside influences, your friends and the wrong people and the wrong things. And, and, uh, but somehow, what does it bring up a child in the way he should go? Yes. And, and yes. Uh, so I wound up uh, finding a different way. So tell me about that because here you are. You're, you're living a lifestyle that's not following the Lord. No. And how did God finally get your attention and say, Stan, I'm over here? You know? I know it sounds cliche, but I was watching the 700 Club one day. No way. Uh, ben Kinchlow was on, and he was the first guy I ever saw make prayer cool. It was, he was like, brother, you know, just pray like this and just do this and do that. And, and something in your heart. And it's funny how God brings you together. Absolutely. At just the right I, moment. With uh, and and so it's it's full circle to come here, and I'm kind of in awe of the whole set of the 700 Club, and I'm like, wow, this is. I remember being a kid just watching the show and and praying while watching the show. So here you are. You hear Ben Kenchlow say, if you want to talk to God, just he's right here in front of you. Pray. And just in plain, simple English language, I was just, okay, God, if you're real, if this is really real, then show me. And, and what did God do? You know, I, I, it was the first time I, I'd seen people praying in tongues before, and uh, you know, I was kind of skeptical of it. I didn't really believe it, sure. and and I'm like, come on, now is this? You know, this You're making that up, yeah. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. just acting, it's play acting, and and I just said, okay, if it's if it's real, I want to know. I I was in the house by myself in Columbus, Ohio, in college, and and all of a sudden I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and I started speaking in tongues and it scared me at first and then I, I felt this peace and from then on I knew that I knew that I knew. So God made himself real to you in a very unique way when you prayed that prayer. Now you're in college and what were, were you pre-law? I was pre-law pre -law. and, uh, and I, I was kind of frustrated the direction I was going. I didn't know what, what I wanted to do but it wasn't law. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't Which law. I am in. <laughs> and, <laughs> And I prayed again, and God just spoke to me and said, you know, go to California. And I went, and I'd never acted before. I never had any training, never took a class. Uh, and I went out, and in a few years, I'm on a TV series. That is so amazing. Do you know how few people that happens to? It sounds made up, but it's yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you go out to California. God gives you favor. I mean, it wasn't like you didn't have to... to push and, and be there and yes it, it uh, there were times I didn't eat uh, it was it was tough but uh, it, I just sort of I knew that God sent me there and I if I just persevered it was going to happen and uh, doors just open yeah and you got a television series got a TV series tour of duty changed my life and it 
Wow. It absolutely changed my life. And then how did you go from that to Preacher's Kid? Tell me about how God moved uh, you through well, that. Well, uh, I, was, I was on the TV series, and again, I found myself in this place of not being happy, not mm -hmm. being satisfied. Something didn't feel right, and I wanted to, I wanted to write. And uh, it's interesting, I'd written some scripts, and, and I remember an executive in the studio saying that the writing was not very good. And uh, years later, it's ironic, I, I, God gave me a word at church, and, he, and there was a, a prophet that came to my church, and he said, thus saith the Lord, there's a writer in you. And wow. it was like, it just yeah. kind of knocked me off my feet. And years later, I wrote Woman Die Out Loose, and that same studio executive uh, I met with uh, had seen Woman yeah. Die Out Loose and said, wow. You know, sometimes we just have to believe that the gift and the desire that God's placed in our heart are going to come together as we use them. Yes. Because I think many people are discouraged in Hollywood and, well, probably in other jobs as well when, when it's not there right away. And you had to hone your skill. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I got a little success early on, like within just a few weeks, and then I didn't work for like two or three years. Wow. And, and during those years, it was it was the training, mm -hmm. it was the uh, it was the honing of the skills. I I would I would learn in the most unorthodox way, but yeah. but God. Uh, I absolutely was my teacher. A lot of character building in those years, too, of, I bet you. You know, not eating <laughs> builds character. It really does. And I wouldn't trade any of yeah. it. So tell me about Preacher's Kid. Preacher's Kid, uh, wow. It, it was inspired by me meeting a real PK, and I, I had no idea about the whole Had never stigma. even thought about it. Never yeah. thought about it. And uh, and once I found out, I thought, wow, what a wonderful backdrop. So it's it's really the story of the prodigal daughter. And it's, it's set, I use the device of the preacher's kid, and also I put in the backdrop of these gospel plays, like Tyler Perry's plays. Yes. And, uh, and this girl goes away from home thinking she's missing something, and she gets more than she's bargained for. Wow. And so is that what we're going to watch in the clip that we've I, got? Yes. We're going to see, uh, I forget the first clip, but I think that's it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's, we're going to take a look at a scene from Preacher's Kid. Here it is. My daddy's a pastor. Mm -hmm, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> so, is it true what they say about you all? What? I mean, I hear PK is uh, like the biggest freaks ever. Excuse <laughs> you? <laughs> no disrespect. I mean, I just hear PK is a really messed up. And there's the pressure of being perfect. We can't make mistakes like everybody else. Would it be a mistake for you to spend the night with me? No. I mean, yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> the beginning of the trauma, right? Can I just say, yes. that, that actress, uh, it's her first movie. Uh, really? Her name is Latoya Luckett. She used to be in Destiny's Child. She was one of the original members with Beyonce. And uh, she had a smaller role in the film, and I put her in the lead role without reading her for the lead, just on a hunch, and she's amazing. She's wonderful. Wow, you took a hunch on something that big. You know, I just, this is my first time directing, and I just sort of followed what was in my heart uh, throughout, and it just worked out so well. Did you like what you did? I mean, are, you, are we going to see more I from you? I am addicted. <laughs> 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 Once you've directed, uh, you know, the, yeah. I've acted, written, produced, uh, and go to my website if you can, stanfoster.com. You'll see everything we're doing, stage plays. And, and uh, Preacher's Kid out at the end of this theaters, month? Theaters, uh, uh, January 29th. Uh, okay. everywhere in the country, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Grown men are crying after watching this movie. Wow. It's really an emotional film, wow. and it's, it's a good message, and uh, the theme is you can always come back home. Stay true. Thank to you the very Lord much. Stand. I appreciate it. Thank Great you. to have you here. God bless Thank you. Don't forget, Preacher's Kid opens in theaters January 29th. Go to CBS.com to find a theater near you where you can enjoy it.